Hi, my name is Cameron McIntosh. I'm an ENT surgeon and a board certified facial plastic surgeon. So let's chat a little about adenotonsillectomy. So how we have been created is that we have a special ring of tissue in the back of the throat where we can trap foreign particles and the body learns to build its immune response towards that. And it's made up of the tonsils and the adenoids. The adenoids are difficult to see, they sit in the back of the nose, but if you open your mouth, it's quite clear to be able to see the tonsil tissue. So with little children, there are two groups of children we operate on. The one group of children are those who often get sick and they have chronically inflamed tonsils and adenoids and the bacteria live in that area. They often having antibiotics and we're not really made to be living off antibiotics. So that's a group of kids who we have to operate and we remove that bed of bacteria, if you want to call it that. The other group of kids are not necessarily kids who get a lot of infections, but they've got really big tonsils. And because of that, they often are snoring. And the long-term sequelae of that is that their hearts and their lungs are taking more strain to get more oxygen to the brain. So that's an obstructive group of children which we operate on. When it comes to the actual day of the operation, what would happen is you would bring your child into theater, we put a mask on them and they fall asleep. It's got to be absolutely calm for everyone involved. Once I've proceeded to remove the adenoids, if they are there, I'll have a look, and the tonsils, the child goes back to the ward. And at the ward, once they've eaten and they're stable, they can get discharged. What's important from, from the parent's side is that the child's pain is managed and that the child does not have soft foods. It's, it's a complete change of what has been done in the past. We want the children to be able to chew so that there's, the muscles are working harder, there's more blood flow to that wound bed and also with rougher, rougher foods the wounds get sloughed off so that their healing takes place quicker. People ask me how long is the recovery? It's quite difficult to say. Some kids bounce back the following day, other kids can take a week or even more to get better. It's really important to understand that there can be complications in surgery. Because it's a general anesthesia, there are risks with general anesthesia. In terms of the risks of the surgery from, uh, from my side, by far the most important one would be bleeding. And that can be an early bleed or a late bleed. Kids' voices may change because you can imagine if you remove a hollow tissue in the back of the nose, instead of being speaking nasally, they now can pronounce their words better. They could have ear pain because the same nerve that travels through the tonsil bed ends up in the ear. So it gets stimulated even though it's the tonsil area that we've been working on, but the kids can complain about ear pain. 